Okay, welcome to the February meeting of the Aurora Arts Alliance. Tonight, I am thrilled to be able to introduce our speakers. We have members of the Aurora Historic Preservation Commission, Kristen Ludwig and Amber Foster. We're going to share uh, photographs and information about downtown Aurora's historic architecture. So they have a lot to share with us and I don't want to interrupt their flow. So I'm going to turn it directly over to them. Take it away, ladies. Okay, um, I'll go ahead. Hi, I'm Kristen. Nice to meet you. Some of you I have met before and some of I haven't. Um, and with me is Amber Foster. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what we're looking at. And um, what Amber and I have done is um, we looked over the current um, RFP that is out. Can you see my screen okay, Kate? Cannot? Okay, help. sorry. Try that again. Okay, now there you go. Okay. Um, and so what we did is uh, we heard about this project and thought we might be able to provide a little inspiration. Um, City of Aurora has some really cool um, history and architectural styles that are very unique to our city and a lot of stories behind them that are unique as well. So what we did is we have taken the six um, locations and utility boxes. We looked at the surrounding areas and the buildings that were around and we looked at applying um, a, a um, architectural theme around each of the box sites. And so these are just here to help provide some inspiration, not to be directional, but about some of the local buildings and some of the local styles that um, might be a worthy consideration for that location. So um, there's far more that we were able to apply. And so, um, you know, you're welcome to reach out to us either as part of this meeting or after this meeting um, with any questions you have. I know you've got a short time frame to build your, um, to build your artwork. So anyway, uh, we are not artists, but we try to make a jazzy enough presentation for all of you. And they all have the same format. So we're gonna look at where that box is located so you can see the surrounding area. We're gonna talk a little bit about a theme that could work for that area. We'll give you some examples of buildings and um, various artistic elements that could provide you a little inspiration. So um, did I cover that okay, Kate? Is that what you're looking for? Okay, um, so again, this is just coming straight off of your instructions. We use the theme, um, you know, looking for the colorful interpretations um, and geometric abstractions. Um, we were definitely looking at things that are a pre-World War II era in terms of the time frame that they happened um, and also trying to give you a very heterogeneous feel um, across those boxes. And so that's why we picked out different themes for each box, representing um, a good picture of the smattering of different types of styles we have all over the city and tried to make sure we had good coverage of each of those time periods as well throughout the city. The locations are in your um, RFP as well. So just really quick kicking it off, um, we're gonna toggle back and forth Amber and I for the different ones that we looked at. The first one that we looked at is on the corner of Benton and River, and this is right near um, Society 57, the coffee house. So for those of you that are familiar with that spot, for this, we looked at the potential of an Art Deco theme, which is a really fun style. And Society 57 has incorporated that even into the logo that they have in the coffee shop that's literally right next to it. So um, that was one that we thought could be a really fun one to play around with. Obviously, the period is the 20s and 30s. Um, many of you guys are going to be familiar with this. This is that kind of speakeasy, Great Gatsby kind of feel. Um, I won't read them all off to you, but there are some specific architectural features that you will see that's used in Art Deco. And the following slides will show you visual examples of those, and you'll recognize them pretty, pretty um, obviously. I'll point those out in the pictures to come. There's also some very specific fonts that are um, very reminiscent of that Art Deco style, and we'll have, we have some examples for those of, for you as well. So I assume, Kate, that they're going to have this deck available to them afterwards that they can read through it. So I won't bother reading through those. Instead, I'll go to the fun part, which is the pictures. Um, so the Paramount is a great example of an Art Deco style. And so you can see, for example, these flat panels, you can see there's a lot of um, flourishes if you, there's a lot of bedazzling in Art Deco. So you can see from the top of the Paramount sign where it has a sort of fan shape, but there's a lot of 
glitter and sparkles um, and a lot of patterning that you can see. So it's a really good example if you're looking for um, the kind of textures and things that you can pull, pull out of it. It's a very rich style. Um, I also grabbed a couple shots for you of the inside of the Paramount because I think that gives you a lot of um, feel for how rich it was in terms of textures and colors and the layering of patterns. Um, and you'll probably recognize this, um, what they would do with the font, which is very more thin, clean lines, tended to be all caps. A lot of times you'll see shading of the, the characters. Um, and so, um, again, all those details are written out in the first slide, but just to give you some, uh, a taste of Art Deco. We'll continue moving forward, but again, we can answer questions at the end or however you guys wish. Amber, this one, uh, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so the next one is the southeast corner of Galena and River Street, um, and the style is prairie which is a very specific style um, that if you saw it, you definitely know what it, it is. And actually behind that, um, you can kind of see it in the background, the building is, uh, I believe that's the old Second National Bank building, which we'll see some pictures in the next slide. Um, so of course the Prairie style is Frank Lloyd Wright and uh, Aurora has five buildings downtown that are Prairie, so we have a a lot of prairie style buildings. Um, and the features are horizontal spaces, flatness, um, symmetry, a lot of geometric shapes, and they have a very natural feel to them. So um, we'll go on to the next slide because uh, like she said, you have, you'll have you have those to view later. Um, so some very different um, different types of buildings that are in downtown Aurora. You have the Keystone Building, which was built in 1923. And I'm sorry, the Prairie style developed in 1890s and flourished between 1901 and 1909. So a lot of the buildings that we have came from George Elmsley, who was a, um, a student of Frank Lloyd Wright um, and, and Sullivan and Prairie style in the Prairie School. So we all five of the buildings that are in downtown Aurora were actually designed by him specifically. Um, and all were built in the 1920s. So uh, the Keystone was 1923, Old Second National 1924, the Grand Building 1926, um, and the Elks Building, which is also 1926. Um, some of the pictures you can see, they have uh, the geometric shapes in the windows. Um, you have the very specific uh, geometric lines going down, um, vertical lines really uh, with the windows and lots of windows and very natural looking flourishes and things like that. Um, so you can go to the next slide. This specific building in downtown Aurora, the um, Elks building was actually, it's actually a very rare building due to the fact that it is an example of a Mayan motif applied to Prairie School, which is something that's very um, unique to specifically Aurora. So it's kind of cool that we have that in our downtown space. Um, the other building, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, we can continue. Oh. Frank Lloyd Wright act also designed his own um, fonts. So, if you were to do something with um, it artistically, you could use some of the fonts that he specifically designed for the Prairie style, which is uh, Exhibition, Eagle Feather, Terracotta, and Midway. So um, just something that you were able to, to kind of use for any art designs that you have. Okay. Um, we definitely felt like you can't ignore Queen Anne when you're talking about all things Victorian. And so on the main street, and this is um, right on the corner of New York and Broadway, this is that baking school and supply shop right across from the buildings that are coming on the Broadway side of the Water Street Mall. Um, and so we thought this could be a great place to show off uh, Queen Anne style. And Queen Anne is not just for, um, you're probably used to Queen Anne with the big wraparound porches and the big turrets, but you actually see Queen Anne style in commercial buildings as well. And we have some really fun examples, especially on LaSalle, which is not far from where this street is, 
Um, but a great example that you see all over the, the downtown are these are our cast iron um, telephone, or sorry, our, our light fixtures. So anytime you see these prefabricated cast iron, um, and this is where you see a lot of detailed patterns, a lot of floral, a lot of bric-a-brac, um, just again, high detailing. Um, and this is because in 1880 to 1890, this is when they were able to start making these prefabricated um, types of scrolls, wood scrolls, iron scrolls, all this stuff. And so they went way over the top, right? And so that's why you see this very fancy um, um, look to it because they didn't have the ability to, to manufacture fancy looking things <laughs> up until then. And so you'll see a lot of, um, I'll show you in the pictures of what that looks like in a commercial application in the downtown. Um, and again, there's a lot of um, uh, fonts that are that really bring out this type of style. So looking at some of the pictures, um, when you see this kind of a bay window that kind of goes one, two, three, and it's a cluster of windows, um, that's called an oriel window. And so you will see that on, on a lot of um, Queen Anne style commercial buildings. So if you were to drive up and down LaSalle, you'd see a whole bunch of them, but you'd also see a bunch on Broadway as well. So it's kind of that Main Street Queen Anne look. So, um, the, and also as you can see, for those of you familiar with what's now the, the Calilly Tea Room, um, they even have a turret. So um, these kind of turrets and uh, these fancy bays that come out, um, and you can see a lot of just the intricacies in design, as well as, again, like I said, the cast iron lamp posts. Those are all reminiscent of uh, Queen Anne style. Um, and as you can see, their fonts, they went, you know, very, again, intricate and scrolly and kind of reminiscent of the, the patterns that they were doing in their woodwork and their, and their iron at that time of year. And you'll see lowercase and small case in, in that style. So a lot of fun stuff you can play with. And that really gives that feel of kind of that Main Street USA, I think as well, which so that's why we thought Broadway would be a fun one for, for that in particular. And oh, this is you, Amber. And these kind of um, overlap as far as style, the Queen Anne and the commercial style. Um, so the time period was is 1890 to 1920 and this is Southwest corner of New York in LaSalle Street. Um, so it's auto row, really, uh, historically speaking. Um, downtown examples, well, actually, architectural features, um, she kind of talked to them with the Queen Anne style, um, kind of uh, hybrid with the Queen Anne and the commercial. So just speaking of commercial style, um, what you'd have is a large band of windows, which she kind of showed you uh, the, the bay windows in the front. Um, and then they have the ground floor storefronts. So um, the one that uh, you're actually pointing at, that's a good example, um, 77, 75, um, 75 to 77 LaSalle Street, which was constructed in 1915, um, which you can see the prism, the glass pieces, um, which are actually in that specific building approved by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, but with this whole commercial style, we also were thinking that we could go beyond that, which is why we have a picture of the roundhouse um, and then the cars uh, with the main street feel to it, if you wanted to go that way also, just to kind of um, elaborate the, the scope of what you were doing in that specific um, part of the city, so. Yeah, some of our thinking there was like commerce and industry was such a, a big part of what made Aurora as large as it became, especially in its biggest heyday. Um, you know, the fact that we were using electricity first and we were using, we had cable cars and we had, we had so much going on wired into that downtown. So to try to find a way to sneak some of that in <laughs> was what we were thought commercial um, could help to do. And this is just showing our downtown with our cable cars. And there's so much more you can see in this though. And we got Auto Row and that location of where that box is. It's an industrial feeling area right in there. And it's, it's kind of a, a fun one to play around with. Oh, fonts for you too. Um, yeah, these are uh, kind of some of the fonts that you could possibly use in some of your art as well. Um, kind of has a um, more Victorian type feel to it with uh, 
kind of very simple, but yet has the little flourishes um, in the, the lettering, uh, just, just as an option if you wanted to use that um, as well. And more the kind of font you would see on a commercial sign, mm -hmm. it's just like um, scrawling. This one's your okay. two. And this is right the west side of River Street, north, uh, north of Benton. So we were kind of, when we were looking at this specific um, area, we were looking at the building right behind with the arches uh, and kind of thinking of what buildings uh, really have those, that type of style and feel to it. And the one that we thought of was um, Leland Tower, which was built in 1928. So it's kind of fun when we were looking at it, it um, the style was a modern adaption of an Italian Romanesque, which is something you probably wouldn't think of when you looked at Leland Tower uh, because it is an adaption. But um, the architectural features, uh, we have the thick walls, the round arches, uh, the sturdy piers, the large towers, and the symmetrical plans. So um, it's very ornate decorations. Uh, with the composition with little depth and depth, I'm sorry, landscape backgrounds, abstract versus reality. So if you go to the next slide, you can really see where they were trying to go with it. Um, the idea with Leland Tower was to kind of recreate the towering structures across the Italian, Italian hillside. So you can really see it in the picture um, of how the two compare and what they were going for with the adaption of that that type of style. But um, I love this one. I think that's so cool. <laughs> when Amber found that picture, I was like, "Oh, it's Leland Tower in Italy!" Like <laughs> they really pulled it off. Yeah, you it, you can really see um, what, like I said, what they were going for, and um, it really does fit the two. So it's really really neat to see. Oh, that's it for that one. Do you have any more on that one, Amber? I'm sorry. No, no. Okay. So it's another one that's kind of rare and unique. So we thought that was kind of fun. Um, okay. So then we have back, there's quite a lot over by uh, that River Street, Benton area. So we try to get very distinguished styles, you know, really try to keep it um, heterogeneous, which I think is what they asked for in the RFP. So um, we certainly can't talk about, um, this era without talking about the Italianate historical style. We have lots of great examples of Italianate buildings in the downtown. Um, and again, you'll see that there's a lot of overlap in these time frames, but still very distinctive styles within. Um, so these will all be called Victorian era styles. But Italianate is really cool. It's one of my favorites. These are known for their low flat roofs. Um, they are typically a couple, at least a couple of stories tall. Um, I'll show you some pictures. They're easy to, to recognize once you know what you're looking at. Um, and some very specific fonts we can look at. So um, what you'll see in Italianate is you will see these very tall, narrow windows um, and lots of them. Um, you will typically see on the upper levels, you'll, you'll find arches to the windows, but again, they're always skinny, tall windows. Um, you will also see, um, you'll see a protruding eave. And so in my little picture, you'll see, and you'll see very fancy brackets that are holding them up. And so I'll show you some examples. Um, the originally, so this is a silver plate manufacturing building. This is where Charlie's ice cream shop is now today. And so you can see these really tall windows um, in a storefront environment, it would still be quite tall and skinny. And um, you can see probably it had these details on the roof originally. Um, most of this building was lost to fire. And so that's probably where it probably had some wood ornamentation that was um, lost in the fire. Um, but as you can see, we have a bunch of others too. This is typically what you would see along the top of an Italianate building. You can see that drastically protruding eave. So it's like a shelf. It looks like it's really sticking out far. And you can see these really ornamental brackets. And again, they, they like those details. So it's very typical over the tops of the windows to see a little bit of extra fancy treatment. So all these buildings in this whole row here are Italianate. Um, this is where now is the Fox Valley, oh shoot, what do they call it, Amber? 
where the concerts are going on. It's great. And I'm blanking on the name, but um, I can't. I'm sorry. This is, uh, actually, this is Gary Brown's art studio. I'm sorry. That's what this one is. So you can see that there. And, but right next to where the, the venue, that's what I'm trying to think of. Oh, yeah. yeah this is on Galena. So again, you'll, and this is, uh, this is at the corner of Broadway and Galena, again, where they're doing all the construction. So really common, you'll see the arched windows at the top, tall, skinny windows, and this treatment. And again, the flat top roof is a, is a pretty big giveaway for Italian aid. As far as the font, it's actually not hard to find one that kind of fits more of the Italian aid style. Typically, it's all caps, no lowercase, and you'll see a little bit of flourish, but not a lot. And oftentimes, you'll see the shadow on the letter. So that was um, um, one that uh, tends to show up a lot with this particular style. And again, whenever you see these with the fonts, these are the names of the fonts that we are to find online for you. And um, so you should be able to find some online examples. Ooh, I think that's it. Do we do okay for time? Oh, I think you're muted, Kate. I cannot believe how quickly you got through all of that. <laughs> that was a lot of information. And we didn't even tell all the stories and stuff, but hopefully it's enough flavor that you might have seen one that make you go, oh, I could do something with that.